Right, the main bit difference between RBE MMT and Keynesian MMT is that with Keynesian MMT, the idea is it doesn't matter what the money is spent on, just as long as it's spent. The money supply is increased, and uh, worries with the uh, RBE MMT, it matters very much how the money is spent. But re either way, the economy benefits by the increase in the the demand to the, the economy. The demand side of the economy increases as the uh, projects have, as, as when there's projects are created to spend the money on. And the money is spent, goes in the economy, prosperity is increased on a widespread scale. So I think MMT overall is the way to go. But But I think that it is important, though, to, it seems like commonsensical, but this isn't always uh, ab abided by the, the commonsensical principle that if you're going to be spending the money, might as well spend it on something that's going to help society. It's going to improve things, improve the quality of life for the citizens that exist in the society where the money is spent. Now, that just seems like that, yeah, it seems like that's common sense, but there's an old ac axiom of Keynesian economics um, that it's, it, it, we're, it, it doesn't matter where, how the money is spent. It, it's, it's, an, it's an old uh, analogy where it would be just fine to pay, pay workers to dig a holes just to, just to fill them back up again. Because the, the workers would get, get, be getting a paycheck. They'd spend that paycheck uh, into the retail economy and, they, uh, and also the in order to supply, you need to supply the workers with shovels, and so shovels will be bought from the hardware store, and the hardware store would uh, have to buy more shovels from the shovel manufacturers, so they get new business, the hardware store is new business, shovel manufacturers new business, the shoveler, the worker shovelers would get in paychecks and spend those paychecks in the community, and so the overall economy would be improved by paying the workers just to dig holes, only to fill them back up again. But the thing is, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, the economy is going to be improved, but there's uh, no, not going to be any benefit to the, uh, to the and there's going to be no improvement in the quality of life for the, uh, the community in which those holes were dug and filled up again. Whereas you get the same improvements in the demand side of the economy if the project was done to, say, improve some part of the infrastructure instead of doing a, 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 a job that doesn't do anything. Dig, the digging holes example. But supposing if they, instead of digging holes to fill them up again, um, projects were created to, for instance, build a, a pedestrian overpass over a busy road, busy, busy dangerous road, then the quality of life would be improved for the uh, in, in that community where the over, overpass would be built and all the same benefits for on the demand side of the economy would be improved as well because all those workers would be p getting paychecks to build that overpass and the suppliers to, for all the supplies to pr provide the concrete and the rebar they would be those businesses that sell sell concrete and rebar they'd be getting new new business new new income uh, so the workers, the suppliers, all the same aggregate demand benefits would happen. But on top of that, there would be improvements to the community. You have now a nice, safer place for people to cross that busy road. There's always, there's always places where something like overpass could be used. There's, I, mean, I mean, there's so many places where that's the case. Pedestrians have such a difficult time crossing roads because they're so busy. So that, that's something that can always be done. And we want to provide a substantial sub material benefit to that community. But, and so, I mean, but, so, so what? It, 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 so it doesn't make a, lot, a whole lot of sense, it, it, this Keynesian principle, that it doesn't matter how the money is spent. I, I think that's absurd, but that's been a long-held held belief in Keynesian economics. And so, I think that's 
So I'm kind of making this distinction between Keynesian and, uh, and RBE, you know, MMT, just to make sure that it's clear that insofar as we're going to create this, if we are going to implement an MMT environment, I just remind everybody that it's important how the money is spent. Don't just go to that old Keynesian principle where it doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. I mean, if you're going to be spending it, spend it on something that's going to help people, help the society, help, help the community. But, um, and so it, it, I think if you want to look at an example, a real-world example where Keynesian MMT has been implemented on a wide scale, we only need to look in, at China in, more, in re recent, uh, recent decades, the, the massive growth in, growth in China. Especially, especially over the last 20 years, they have en engaged in a, a lot of Keynesian MMT whereby they have built these huge ghost, ghost cities as no residents. These like, could, could, could fit like hundreds of thousands of people, huge high-rises with few or no, few or no residents. Um, but the thing is, it, they, China is an example where it's, to dem they, they've proven that MMT works because it has worked. They've spent it on money, even though they, it, even if they didn't, uh, weren't, weren't care, didn't care about how, how it was spent, they, they just made sure the money kept going in the economy, and, the, and in turn, the economy just kept, kept growing and continues to grow. So they, they, they've used that, that principle of MMT. But unfortunately, to a large extent, they've gone by the uh, Keynesian model. And to some extent, yeah, sure, they've done the uh, RBE, MMT also, especially in the case with say like the high speed rail network they've they've been building. So there there that's more of a Keynesian MMT. I mean, I mean it's more of an RBE MMT when they built those high speed rails because hey, you know, that improves the quality of life for the uh, for the people living and visiting China. They can now get get go by go, get around places real quickly and safely on those uh, high speed rail systems. So I wish they would have done that. More so, uh, with the other kinds of MMT, because instead of just building these huge ghost cities, instead of that, they could have built all these people could have had homes and be nice, 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 nice new homes, homes, or have like do some home improvements on a mass mass scale for the existing, uh, where the people are already living in China, and they could also build like say new hospitals or and equip those new hospitals with new equipment. Um, spending on things that we're gonna, gonna improve the quality of life for the for the citizens, uh, all all the citizens uh, of China. And yeah, the, I, 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 it's amazing. Yeah, how much how much the the economy did benefit from all this uh, uh, Keynesian MMT with the building these building these ghost cities, um, even though it provided no very, very little little no no to no benefit to anyone. Um, uh, other than the adding the, the demand demand to the economy in the process of building building those ghost cities, um, but yeah yeah so and when we're looking at the uh, our, our yeah, RBE MMT how the the old but but here there's a constant uh, cry to improve improve inf infrastructure which I can agree completely. If we did that on a wide scale, on a massive scale, there would be a massive improvement in the economy, I think. There's always some, something that needs to be done. There's, there's, it's like an endless, endless supply of things that could, could be improved on in the infrastructure. There's uh, roads, um, sewers, you can improve the par par parks, um, and uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things. Um, there's, uh, even got computer networks, uh, communication networks. Um, uh, but but there's this always this hand wringing uh, among the representatives in Congress, uh, politicians. They don't want to ring about so much about oh how this can cost so much. They they, they were concerned about all about the cost. Um, so what we end up end up with is a uh, austerity, and that's the opposite of MMT. That's the worst thing you can do is the austerity. I think we need, need to impl implement some form of MMT. It should be the RBE MMT, but some kind of MMT, and, but instead in Europe, much of Europe and the U.S., uh, there is this idea of uh, implementing austerity um, when there's all, the, all these debts inevitably build up over time. It always happens. 
if if you have these all these debts, there's gonna and there's not and they're not written off, um, such as like in the student debts, that situation. Then they're going to eat into the uh, demand economy, and then yeah, that that's what you know. Europe is already starting to slip into recession, and I think they. It looks like eventually, pretty soon, not too long, U.S. is going to slip into recession too. Um, but so instead of you know, being all so concerned about it, using austerity to implementing austerity to make sure and then putting like a, a priority towards paying off the debts to to the banking sector, so that there's so much less demand then in the along Main Street to pay, to uh, help the economy and. Improve, improve, uh, you know, wide, improve the widespread uh, prosperity on the main street economy. So all this money is instead being spent to pay off the debt. And so that puts per, per huge pressure, downward pressure, on the economy, um, uh, at least the main street economy. And uh, so that's where we need to, we need to in implement an RBE, uh, MMT, if in, you know, in such areas. It, the part part of that MMT I think can be implemented just by wiping out student student debt, for instance. That would be like a form of MMT because the, then there'd be so much more demand. Students wouldn't have to be spending so much money towards the paying off their debts. Instead, they can spend it on the retail economy, and the economy would be boosted. All these businesses that were not getting the money from these uh, students, the college graduates. The businesses now would be getting their business because the the college graduates now have all sorts of more money to spend into the economy to pay to, to patronize these these uh, businesses. Um, they're not able to now because it's because of austerity. That, that's how austerity it is. When they're trying, when people have to put all the money towards paying off debts to the to the financial sector instead of paying putting into the retail main street sector. So, so we need to. You know, right, do things like wiping out student student debts, for one thing. But for such as some something like infrastructure spending, don't even have to go into debt for that. The U.S. Treasury can print money free fiat currency to do something similar to what was done um, in the time of uh, Abraham Lincoln. You know, Lincoln implemented something called called the the, the, the greenback, the Lincoln greenback, which was a was a it was all, it was the U.S. public treasury printing money, fiat currency, debt free, to into the economy to pay for to pay for things in, instead of going into debt, like the like the government is doing now, and letting the, the private Federal Reserve system do all the money printing, debt based money printing. So what we need to do instead is go back to the idea of the Lincoln Greenback. To pay for all this massive infrastructure spending that we should be doing, we need to print all the money, all the money we need to spend on these projects. When you do that, there's no, no, there should not be any danger of hyperinflation because these each dollars will be matched with uh, uh, goods and services. So the as the so the goods and services will go increase with the to match with the increased money supply, so that and when that happens, there should not be a, uh, there should not be any uh, excessive inflation. Um, then, so that yeah, that's it, it has been done before, and it was successful too. Now, don't forget that the Lincoln Greenback was successful in creating massive, widespread middle class prosperity for the short time that existed. Um, on the on the main improved. Improved uh, Main Street prosperity, meh, wi widespread middle class prosperity, while it existed for the short time exist it existed. It was a fiat currency printed, debt free, um, the Lincoln Greenback, without any, and uh, no no hyperinflation ever happened, because the increase in money with the increase in money supply matched the increase in the uh, goods in supply of the goods and services. So there's no mismatch. So that's what would happen could happen again. I think would happen again if we were to go back to the the Lincoln Greenback of the U.S. Treasury 
public treasury to print out the money that we need to uh, engage in MMT, RBE MMT, do things, spend it on things that are improve the quality of life for the citizens of the United States of America. We can do that again. That's what we should do. And uh, that's why I support an RBE MMT system. Uh, opposite of austerity. No, no more austerity. We don't need that. The financial uh, sector, they'll be fine. Don't worry about them. They'll be okay. You need to worry about us. Regular folks. Main Street folks. Um, we need to take, our, take care of ourselves in this country. And that will help things massively. Otherwise, we're just going to slip into an austerity-induced recession. Just like uh, Europe is starting to slip into now. Um, and But if we were to do the opposite and engage in an RBE MMT, I think we'd receive see, uh, widespread prosperity. Um, we would be able to match China's growth. And we would be... Uh, I mean, because China's going to continue to grow, I think. I keep hearing, oh, they're, they can't keep up this much longer. I think they can. As long as they continue to use implement MMT policies, they're, they're going to continue to grow. They've, they've demonstrated. There's no, there's no, they've not seen any signs of them, um, of it uh, taking up what I call hard landing. Um, there's no, no indication that happened. I don't think, I don't think it will happen. And we, we don't have to have a hard landing either if we start implementing the same kind of ideas that, that they did, but only the RBE form of the MMT. We don't need to build, be building any ghost cities. Um, we don't need to build, be building any uh, bridge to nowhere. So that's one, another example. I think the Keynesians would say, yeah, they should have completed it, <laughs> that, that bridge to nowhere. Um, but no, I think we should br focus on the bridges we have now, maintaining them. If we need any new ones, we could then we could build a new one, new new ones. But uh, where where they exist and where we actually need them, we're really gonna people need to get across the across rivers and and such. Um, but th th those are my ideas. So yes, MMT is great, but make sure we do spend the money on something we I think so they're gonna help the quality of life of the people. So yeah, do make sure it's an RBE MMT when we're gonna do that. Do the MMT. Those are my ideas. Th thanks for listening. Um, that's all you have to say for now, I think. Um, that I can think of. Oh, I was trying to keep this brief. Hope it's short enough. Hope it's not too long. Uh, thanks for thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs>